Hi everybody, this is Jim. I'm making a video today at eight months for folks who are suffering with an adverse reaction to ciprofloxacin, Leviquin, Avalox, any of the fluoroquinolone antibiotics. Um, I don't want to spend too much time today talking about my symptom progress, although I will make a quick note. Uh, what I really want to make this video about is something that I think most of us are dealing with who have experienced a reaction to the fluoroquinolones of any real severity, and that is trauma, uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, and in our case, I believe that this is a complex trauma, and I'll get into that in just a minute. Um, to cover my progress real quick, at eight months, I am... So this video is going to be about mostly about trauma and how it relates to those of us going through a reaction. My progress at eight months, uh, cont I continue to improve. I have setbacks sometimes, but the frequency and duration and intensity of all of my symptoms uh, is decreasing. I'm getting strength again. Um, I'm able to have less pain at night so I can be a little more active than I was. Um, most of the psychiatric stuff has diminished, although I still do have lapses where um, I feel like, again, while I'm making this video, um, at this point a lot of that is uh, more trauma related and I feel like we need to move into that direction. Um, now, just because I'm at eight months doesn't mean that you may not have some sort of a trauma to this because you only had a severe reaction for a week or for a month. Um, I think really what it depends upon is the severity of it. So, as I said, I'm getting better. My symptoms are improving. Um, I feel like that there is a good chance I'm going to be normal again, although I'm not there yet. I'd say I'm not even 50% uh, of what I used to be, probably more like 30, 35%. But this is up from 0% or 1%. So I've made uh, a lot of recovery um, since it first happened back in May. This is now the end of January the following year, so I'm in eight months. So let's get into, uh, or, and if you're interested in my journey through this and the symptoms that I've experienced and um, how I've been coping with all that as far as supplements um, and uh, other forms of treatment, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel below and watch some of the older videos. I did begin to video blog this here on YouTube starting in about two or three months. Around two months I started making videos. So I've been making these videos all along. Um, check out the old videos if you like. Right. So trauma. That's really what I'm getting at with this video today. Um, it's come to my attention the more time that I spend with people and with myself um, online, both people that I have become friends with and people that uh, are in the group that I don't know very well, uh, and then in, in becoming aware of my own states of consciousness, my own emotions, my own behavior, um, and my own life that we are experiencing because of this reaction to the fluoroquinolone um, trauma. There is a biological descriptions for these psychological phenomena, uh, and some people focus exclusively on the biology of it, but the fact of the matter is the mind uh, is just as much a part of the body and the emotions as the body, right? Like, they're all connected. There's really no way to escape or isolate treating the body without also considering what's going on with the mind and with the soul, with the spirit, uh, with your emotion center. So I want to talk about trauma. Uh, I'll get into what the symptoms of PTSD are uh, in just a second, but I want to make the designation here and why I'm calling this CPSD, complex, C for complex. Complex PTSD um, a slight distinction. It isn't recognized in the DSM as its own diagnosis, but it's widely recognized within the field 
is a necessary distinction and it will probably be changed in the coming years. Complex trauma is a designation given to PTSD informally in the community which indicates a duration. So what all that means is that we experience essentially what folks in a car accident, uh, folks that were in combat, people that had shock, like a shock trauma, we experience that perhaps as intensely, but more importantly, we experience it repeatedly or for a longer duration of time. Whenever this first happened to me, for about the first two, two and a half months, at least the first 10 weeks, I was stuck in bed immobile going through all the psychiatric symptoms. Um, and the psychiatric symptoms are very scary with this drug. You know, there's hallucinations, there's a lot of anxiety and depression, which would warrant their own videos and discussion. But I think we all have a pretty good grip on what depression is and whether or not we're experiencing some of it along with anxiety. I will point out in saying that, that complex trauma has a very high comorbidity with both depression and anxiety and also borderline personality disorder. So just briefly there, um, like angry outbursts, affectual instability, um, disassociation. These things are common overlaps between PTSD and a borderline personality. They look the same. Um, but this core feature of both and certainly of the trauma is uh, affectual instability. So let's jump right into that then. Probably the number one symptom or trait of a person who has complex trauma is Effectual instability, or another phrase for that is uh, emotional dysregulation. So they are, these are, and I have been also uh, in states of consciousness where it is difficult for me to regulate my own emotions. So I may get upset very easily. I may get angry very easily. So this is a core feature of complex trauma. We get triggered easily very easily. So we are in a hyper aroused state of consciousness. A lot of folks that I've talked to who had reactions to this, we understand that there's a biological effect in the brain that affects our GABA receptors, you know, but this is also resulting in changes to our ability to function in our environment. And discussing this through terms of a psychological model and a diagnosis like trauma helps us better understand what those biological changes actually translate into in terms of our ability to function, right? So people who have complex trauma, number one, A1A, we have emotional dysregulation, we are easily triggered. Because we're in a state of hyperarousal, that's the fight or flight response. This is also, of course, explained in terms of the, the potential GABA receptor damage that we have received from the fluoroquinolone antibiotics, which is supported by clinical research. Um, we are already in a heightened state of anxiety. Already. There's a, an explanation for that, a medical explanation for that. So that means that if you've gone out in public, you've gone to the grocery store, you've been driving in your car, or maybe it's even been so severe that you've been around people that you've known and that you trust, your friends, your family, and your loved ones, and you suddenly feel very hyper-aroused. You don't feel comfortable even in environments in the past where you had no reason to be on guard at all. This is a state of hyper-arousal. This is consistent with a trauma uh, diagnosis, a complex trauma. So if you go to the grocery store, for example, I'll tell some stories about myself. You know, when I was first going back into public after about three months, I was very uh, nervous, very anxious. My perception had changed radically of what was going on around me. I, 
I felt like I didn't really have the confidence to, to navigate through society the way I had before. It's loud noises, you know, people talking, uh, a cart bumping into an eye. Any kind of a noise could could throw me off, could, could startle me, right? So I was hyper aroused. And as a result of being in that state of consciousness, we tend to get emotionally dysregulated very, very easily. So we can suddenly go, ugh or you can become afraid. And what happens whenever you suddenly become startled or afraid, most human beings are either going to fly or they're going to fight. And we all have this mechanism in us. So if you are easily startled and you get angry very quickly, this is consistent with the emotional dysregulation of a complex post-traumatic stress disorder. We were setting in a bed a chair, our house, our rooms, for however many weeks, even if it was only for days. Uh, And if we had a severe reaction, and I think all of us, if you're in these videos, you're probably probably one of the folks that did. Um, For me, it lasted the acute phase probably for three to four months. Some people go through the acute phase in a week or two. But I don't think that it's fair to say because I was in the acute phase for three to four months that it's necessarily that I experienced less psychological harm from it and more trauma because the fact of the matter is we all respond differently. And I guess what I'm saying is with this complex designation, it's that whenever you're poisoned by this drug and you're laying in bed and you're, you're helpless, you feel helpless. You're literally scared to death. You think that you're going to die. I did. Um, and I, I know a lot of other people who did also who had reactions, some that were worse than mine and some that weren't. But we all experienced that fear of death. We thought we were dying. It was incredibly painful. It was terrifying. So there was a lot of fear. And when you're laying with this condition in a bed, just because it only lasted for a day or for a week, and certainly once you get into a few weeks and a few months, you're, you're talking about complex trauma because it isn't so much that there was one or two shocks. It's that we're laying in bed helpless and we're literally suffering the physiological equivalent of a car accident or being in combat. Every hour, maybe every five minutes, every 20 minutes, we get a, a flush of cortisol and a stress response and we feel helpless and there's nothing that we can do and that's repeated and repeated and repeated until our brain begins to hardwire a bit differently and to make shortcuts to get the hell out of that response to stimulation. The brain has to rewire itself in a way that protects it from continuing to experience that level of threat. There's no other way to do that but to to literally then to just shut it down. So whenever we try to go back into the community, into our jobs, or back into our relationships, maybe even if we're, they're in the same house, with our loved ones, our husband and wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, friends, family, we are coming back into that world again as we start to grow out of this condition. And we have to learn to become what we used to be in some ways, because that has been taken from us. So another one of the symptoms consistent with CPTSD is that we have had a destruction of our previous mental identity. It was destroyed. It was destroyed. So coming back into these relationships, and you're going to see how all these symptoms weave together to try to understand this and see if it resonates with you. So our identity has been destroyed. We're suddenly in a hyper-aroused state. Our brain is rewiring to make some shortcuts around having to deal with any of that anymore because we just, your brain just can't deal with it anymore. So then another response, and this is another feature of CPTSD, and it's also very common with the individuals who have had an adverse reaction to Cipro, is disassociation. Or another term for this is depersonalization. Or another term for this is derealization. You can consider depersonalization and derealization as on a spectrum of disassociation. So it's not that depersonalization or derealization, if you've heard this term or identified with it, is not disassociation. It is. It's just that depersonalization 
and derealization are very heightened states of disassociation. So disassociation, I'm just going to refer to it from, from this point forward as a disassociative state, is another response by the brain to kind of cope with what's happening to it through that shortcut system. We disassociate, so people may, you may catch yourself staring off because you can't be in the conversation that you're trying to be in. You can't cope with standing in line at the store. It may even be with someone that you love and care about and that you trust, but you find yourself disassociated. Or you may feel even further states of that disassociation, which which is derealization. And I'm going to read off of reputable websites here. Uh, disassociation, it's a detachment from reality. And a depersonalization is just a heightened form of that detachment. So whenever you're fully depersonalized and disassociated, you may feel almost like an alien. You feel like this whole thing is kind of like the Matrix. Uh, none of it really makes any sense anymore. Um, it feels like maybe you're out of body or that you're just kind of witnessing everything happening from another point of view altogether. So these are all forms of disassociation. This is also a consistent feature of CPTSD. Also consistent with CPTSD is a somatic symptoms. So from this anxiety and this hyperarousal, we already know that this creates a cortisol response in the body. It elevates those levels. So it keeps us on edge constantly. The physiological effect of this is that we, we, we literally are creating gastrointestinal problems, migraines, cardiovascular problems, and perhaps any other somatic complaints that you can imagine. Now, I want to be very careful here and point out that I realize that as a mitochondrial disorder, which is essentially what superfloxis and toxicity is, we can nevertheless, because of the trauma and the stress of it, go on to create symptoms that aren't necessarily as severe as we think they are, or we can find ourselves in a downward spiral, which means that because we're having this reaction that we know is real, that then it causes us stress, and because we have this trauma response to it, it feeds the physiological symptoms, and then it's something that we can never escape from, because we're also creating symptoms and responses that aren't there. So I notice in a lot of these fluoroquinolone groups, people have heightened sensitivities to this broad range of food and supplements. Now, I'm not invalidating any of that. I believe that, and I have had food sensitivities because of superfloxis and that I never had before. So I realized that any foreign chemicals, any foreign additives and substances and processed foods can cause for us to have symptoms, and it's because of the Cipro. But I also firmly believe that a lot of individuals are also creating and somatizing on top of all that symptoms strictly from the trauma response of the brain. So we may be avoiding doing certain things or avoiding certain supplements or coming to the conclusion that certain supplements are causing problems for us or certain foods are causing problems for us in some cases or even certain people are causing problems for us in some cases, when they're not. But I realize that it can also be the case that they are. I just want to make sure, I know that sounds a little bit paradoxical, but I don't want, what I'm saying is I don't want us to, to, to get away from the fact that our mind and body are connected. And so having a, a heightened state of anxiety and hyperarousal and trauma response, fight or flight, regularly will elevate cortisol levels and can cause for a broad range of symptoms respectively. That's all I'm saying about that. So we've got disassociation, we've got hyperarousal, we have affectual instability, meaning that we get angry, we may get angry very quickly, so we lose our cool very quickly, right? Also, with CPTSD, you may have panic attacks, there may be cognitive impairments, so some people that feel like they're having a strictly biological response to the fluoroquinolone are attributing cognitive symptoms 
in its entirety to the biological effect of Cipro in the brain without realizing that the trauma itself and the bodies, the minds, the brains, function of adaptation to this condition can itself create problems which include panic attacks, depression, denial, fear of abandonment, lots, uh, 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 lots of uh, suicidal thoughts, anger issues, rage. I'm reading this off of a website that is the Center for Anxiety Disorders. It is a reputable clinical website. Uh, there could be flashbacks, there could be disassociation, there may be shame or guilt, you may focus on wanting revenge, you may have a lost faith in humanity, distrust, isolation. So another area that this trauma comes into play is in our interpersonal human relationships, and this is another big point that I want to make. Because we are suddenly disassociated, we feel detached from reality, we may this is another feature of CPTSD is distrust of others and, and conflict and instability in interpersonal human relationships. So we may have a very difficult time developing trust in other people, uh, making new friends, forming new uh, relationships, but also it may cause problems in pre-existing relationships. If you're severely affected, you may begin to distrust and be detached from the people that you were currently close with. Um, and if any of these things are happening to you, um, yeah, you did have a reaction to Cipro, but I'm giving you a psychological description of why that's occurring. It isn't simply a biological explanation. Uh, there is this trauma response by the brain. So, I will go through this once more. Uh, there are alterations or changes uh, with other people. You may become withdrawn. You may isolate. There could be disruption in your intimate relationships. Uh, there could be a lot of behavior that is self-protecting. Um, there may be feelings of helplessness. So, a lot of us that went through this, after so many weeks or so many months, we begin to feel very helpless uh, and reliant on other people. And uh, so this, this sort of, uh, of, of, of stressor on the brain itself and the body, but on the brain as a result, results in trauma. And these symptoms are features of that trauma. So if you have identified with any of this, um, Feel free to reach out to me or feel free to identify with this video and recognize that you're not alone. I've gone through this as well. Um, I've seen the trouble that it can cause for me in trying to form relationships with other people um, and, and, and my ability to, to continue to be trusting sometimes even in relationships with people that I've known for years. Um, it's difficult to form trusting relationships with people at this point. Now, it's easy, I suppose, to make superficial connections with people where you're not truly intimate because we're good at, you know, kind of being that persona for people. But what I'm getting at there with the interpersonal problems is that whenever it's actually deeper than that and you're really trying to connect with somebody, that, uh, that these problems can come into play. Um, it is unfortunate, and I would recommend that... that those of, uh, those of us going through an adverse reaction to fluoroquinolones, if it was at all severe, if you were laid up in bed, if you were afraid of dying, if you feel like you are de depersonalized, if you're disassociating, if you're, you're, uh, you're hyper-aroused, you don't feel the same out in public, you're, you're suddenly fearful or angry a lot, um, you're beginning to question you know, people in your life that, that you trusted before, um, if any of these things are happening, I would recommend that you look further into a complex uh, PTSD, um, not just anxiety and depression. Uh, this is something that would sort of envelop the, those two diagnoses. So you can, you can be given a CPTSD diagnosis and, and may also have anxiety and depression along with that. But uh, in this case, with us who are having a reaction, those of us having a reaction, the fluoroquinolones, 
a trauma diagnosis would naturally umbrella depression and anxiety because they are all related phenomena of the brain. Um, so it's a difficult situation for us to be in. I feel like that uh, each day trying to cope with it um, is, let me think, I've reached out to a lot of people that are going through this condition and uh, we've, we've, I've made friends with some and uh, I have come to the conclusion that at least among the people that uh, I've made friends with along the way, that all of us have experienced trauma and are carrying complex trauma with us as a result of fluoroquinolones and nothing else. If you are an individual who has had trauma in your past, certainly in your childhood, um, I had some childhood trauma. Um, so if you've had any difficulty in your development with your parents and your caregivers, then this kind of a reaction to this drug could really crack that trauma open and really create a mess, like a broken egg, where maybe before it was only cracked and leaking, a fluoroquinolone will, will really crack the egg wide open on you and you're going to have a real mess on your hands. Um, so if there is a developmental trauma there in the past, or if you've been traumatized in past relationships with people, past intimate relationships, um, then something like this fluoroquinolone reaction and the subsequent biological effects in the brain and then the duration of the acute phase itself and trying to actually undergo the emotion of it, the, the constant negative emotion and fear uh, and pain, uh, then, then you're really going to be dealing with, with something here pretty heavy. Um, and I think that it's trauma. I'm very, very confident that it is, in fact. I do have a background in psychology. I have a master's degree in psychology from Marshall University. I have worked for a few years professionally in mental health. Um, I was more of a behavioral analyst, and I didn't do a lot of therapy. Um, so if you're familiar at all with psychology, you know that behavior modification and behavior analysis is uh, its own field within clinical and mental health psychology. But I do have some training and some experience with mental health, and I do have a good friend that is uh, well-versed in trauma therapy and uh, psychotherapy. And uh, I do have some support available to me and, uh, and some background to speak on this with any sort of authority. And if, if nothing else, I've gone through the fluoroquinolone reaction myself, so I'm there with you. And I'm just trying to make as much sense out of it uh, as all the rest uh, of you out there. So I hope this video has been helpful. And um, I'm at eight months, getting better. Coping with the trauma, I would say, is to exercise as much as you can. Cultivate those trusting relationships that you have with the few people in your life that you can. Reach out to them. Let them know what's going on with you. And, uh, you know, edge your way through it as carefully uh, as you can with love in your heart. Try to stay open with people. And begin to realize that if you do get triggered and you are constantly on a state of uh, hyperarousal, that you're pushing away a lot of people that otherwise might be able to help and connect with you. Um, so... We're out there, right? Okay, you folks have a good one. Thank you for coming to my channel. I'll make another video soon.